This is a 3D printed rocket car that I made in hopes of going over 200 miles an hour and something that I designed from scratch. Will it work or is it a terrible idea? Probably because it is designed to stop like a fighter jet on an aircraft carrier. Let's see just how fast it can go and watch some mesmerizing slow motion rocket blasts along the way. So the first thing we have to do is make sure we can ignite a rocket motor with a standard RC remote. All right, grab the remote and get ready. Three, two, one, flip it. It works. I'll do that again. <laughs> okay. And it's actually pretty simple if we use an RC switch attached to a spare channel with some dedicated batteries just for the igniters. But we are planning for a cluster of three rockets, so we have a little bit more testing and design work to do before we can launch all of those at the exact same time. We have to make sure we can fire all three rockets at the exact same time, so we've made a test setup that flies down this string so we can control where they're going. All right, countdown. Three, two, one, go. And we did start with a single motor first to give everything a shakedown run. And things worked really well, so we moved straight on to a dual motor setup. Who's our next test dummy? Ooh, big rig. Both rockets ignited perfectly, and we had a ton of acceleration in this case. One, go. In fact, it was so fast, we didn't even catch the fact that it slammed into the ground and broke in half until we got back and watched the slow-mo. We had our first casualty, lost the back end. And speaking of the slow-mo, watching these igniter plugs fly out is so satisfying. But three motors is what we're really after, so it's time to go back at it again with a bigger setup. And this time we're using a larger toy and some high strength painter's tape. Oh, and one more thing, don't do this. We're behind a very tall fence with spotters, tiny rocket motors on a guide wire. Even with that, things can go wrong as you're about to see. Three, two, one, go. Oh no, what is it doing? What is it doing? Go. Not only did this test fail because it melted our guide wire, it also failed to ignite the third rocket at the appropriate time. And this is either because the igniter leads were terribly wired and they just didn't activate one of them, or the leads were touching somewhere that shorted it out before the tip and it just never went off. Either way, we improved the wiring for the future tests, so we should be good to go. But watching from this end of the line shows the absolute chaos that can occur if things don't go right with a cluster of three rocket motors, because you're gonna light that third one off at a time when you really don't want to because the run is supposed to be over. I also had to make an entire RC car to go along with these rockets. We started in the digital world, like always, and then quickly moved on to both resin and FDM 3D printing. I'm using the front wheels from a Traxxas Funny Car Dragster that you may have seen in one of my prior videos. Now that car had a ton of downforce, but it was incredibly stable until it wasn't under braking, it was terrible. So these things are actually crash tested at over 100 miles an hour. The steering and front end packaging on this thing is incredibly tight, even with all of the compact electronics we're using. So I actually had to throw in the igniter switches and some other random electronics in the rear section of this thing, because at that point we were completely out of room. All right, enough talking it is finally time to start the testing on this thing and to start out i'm just going to kind of wedge it in the corner and make sure we can get all three of these motors to ignite simultaneously without any random problems occurring And we had perfect simultaneous ignition of all three rockets, which tells me that not only did we fix the wiring issues, this tiny little 3S battery has enough power to actually set all three of them off on its own. So I moved on to a few sidewalk tests just to make sure that the steering and controls actually do work. And you can see I started with the kick and check method before moving on to an actual motorized launch. And yep, the car can steer, so we're ready to run under motor power. I was incredibly underwhelmed with the speed of this tiny rocket motor. It is small, I know, but we didn't even need a slow motion shot for this thing that was moving so slow. So I moved on to two motors at once and it was still super slow. It was a little bit faster, obviously, but these A-size motors barely do anything. Luckily, I can swap to much more powerful motors. This one C11 motor is the equivalent of four of the former A-size motors. And one of these composite rocket motors is equal to three of the C11 motors or 
36 of the A-size motors. So there's lots of room for more speed. But before we go faster, let's see if we can even stop this thing. The brake on this thing is a drag hook, like a fighter jet on an aircraft carrier. Seriously, this little hook is embedded in the rear of the car and attached to a micro servo so that when I'm at the end of a run, I deploy the hook and hopefully it catches this line attached to weights to stop the car. That sounds very risky, so let's go see if it actually works. To be on the safe side, I started with a single small motor and it did great. But of course it did great because it was only moving like five miles an hour. And because it's embarrassingly slow, you can easily see this little hook drop down and grab the line to stop the car. But to properly test this thing, we need to break out the C11s. This motor really launches the car hard, which sends these weights flying whenever the grab hook finally catches. And remember, we're only running on one ninth of the power that we can expect with three of the larger motors. And this car is designed to hit over 200 miles an hour when it's running three of those motors. And that's due to the fact that it weighs less than two pounds and it has minimal drag. When it comes to speed running, drag becomes the dominant factor. And that's why you see guys run in dual or quad motor setups because they need a ton of power to overcome wind resistance. But when you have a really small frontal area like this car and a low drag coefficient, you don't need nearly that much power. This car probably needs less than one tenth as much power as those guys do to hit the same speed. On a side note, has anyone noticed that these motors keep ejecting themselves? I completely forgot to add in the rocket retainer and plug the motors. So they were just launching themselves out all over my yard, but that's something else we'll fix. In the meantime, I found out that this car is actually in violation of the Rasa speedrun rules because the rocket motors are not all in a vertical line. And that's supposedly because if one motor on one side ignites and the other doesn't, it will try and steer the car, which is supposed to make it dangerously unstable. So let's go see if that's true. In this test, I loaded just one C11 motor on the right-hand side of the car and set it off just to see if it would try and steer it. And I actually didn't really see anything. It was incredibly stable in a straight line with almost no steering inputs or correction. Maybe with the higher power motors, it'll be a problem, but I'm not concerned at all with this guy so far. Anyways, now that the braking system has proved to be perfect and the car is mostly stable, it's time to move on to the higher power testing. I made a dedicated guide wire setup to test this thing on our land, out away from people and buildings in case if anything goes wrong, just out of an abundance of caution. On this first test, we used two of the C motors and it was awesome. It launched super hard like you might expect, but I was surprised at how much friction there was between the aluminum bushings and the guide wire itself. I guess it's just the braided steel cable stopped this thing very quickly on its own. Either way, it's finally time to step up to the big boys. Well, that was terrible. And that was my last cluster igniter. So I need to order more to actually finish testing this thing. I had totally forgot that because all three of these igniters are run in parallel, it doesn't matter if I have one rocket or three, they all go off at the same time always. And hooking up these igniters always makes me so nervous because I'm paranoid that these things are gonna accidentally go off and just melt the skin off of my hands. So I went back and watched some of the slow motion footage and it finally occurred to me that this is a bad design. It's just bad. I don't feel safe going with a cluster of high-powered rockets as is. There's no front suspension and no weight, which means the front end of the car pops up on the smallest bumps, which is incredibly bad with this much thrust because it'll turn into an uncontrollable rocket. You cannot steer a car that's airborne. This middle section was a clear tube to give me as much wheelbase as possible because that does help with pitch sensitivity uh, from an aerodynamic loading perspective. But when you have a ton of thrust, it's not just aerodynamic forces that matter because the thrust itself can lift you into the air. The braking system relies on perfect timing and the hope that it doesn't fail at high speeds. Also, if it's not set up perfectly, the car can go straight under the catch line, which renders the brakes completely useless. And the brake would occasionally jam, which again means I can't stop anywhere in the run. And not to mention that this actually wouldn't be allowed anywhere in any competition. You can't stop the ignition once you've started it. And if the brakes fail, you just gotta hold on for dear life. The car itself also randomly launches rocket propellant for no reason. So it's time to admit I need to redesign this thing. I have 
started on a new design that uses an electric motor for the primary propulsion, but will have rock ups for boost stages. That way I have the motor for braking and a lot more weight so it can't lift off, but I do get the acceleration from a rocket so I can hit maybe two or three Gs before I have the benefit of downforce. I'll have to find a way to add some front end suspension and I will never go back out with a thrust to weight ratio of 12 to one. Wish me luck on the redesign and see you soon.